What's up guys, I'm Cheyenne, that's all book girl. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing some slow burn romances with you. This is probably my most favorite trope theme or pace. I am not a fan of insta love or insta lust, but slow burn I can get down with. There's something about a couple who you feel the angst throughout like 50% of the book. And then when they finally give in to each other, you're like, finally, it is so worth the wait. And these are all of the books that I love that I felt like were slow burn that took a while that you really got a chance to feel their romance develop and come to it didn't feel rushed. It didn't feel like all there was was sexual attraction. There was so much more to the romance and to their relationship. And it made it that much more better and satisfying in the end. So let's go ahead and jump into the recommendations and we will get started. The first book I'm going to recommend is Sweet Chaos by Emery Rose. This is a sister's boyfriend romance, which is such a taboo trope, but one of my favorites to read. And we are following Dylan and Scarlett. And Scarlett sees Dylan for the first time when he is caught climbing in her bedroom window. She has never seen him before. She has no idea who he is till she finds out that he's actually dating her sister. She's super attracted to him. That's like, there's no denying that. She's a lot younger than Dylan. So there's the age difference in that. Not by much, I think a couple years. Um, but Scarlett just has it bad for Dylan, but he's off limits because he is her sisters. This is definitely a book that's very difficult to explain because I don't want to give spoilers away, but if you can picture a girl and it's kind of similar to something in the way series by Jessica Hawkins, Scarlett is so infatuated and madly in love with Dylan and has been since she met him and he doesn't see it right away. He doesn't see it right away. He thinks that her sister is the one. They have this toxicness that goes on between him and her sister that's not healthy. Um, he ends up seeing that he's kind of always had a thing for Scarlett but never felt like he could or like he deserved it. Um, he's definitely the bad boy that grew up on the wrong side of the tracks and he ends up making a life for himself. They are both at a point where they're saying, screw it. We want each other. We're not going to let any other factors mess with what we have. And we're going to try to make it work. It's messy. It's angsty. The romance is so strong and beautiful and so good. Emery Rose writes second chance incredibly. So definitely pick this out if you love that trope and if you love a good angsty romance. The next book I'm going to recommend is On the Way to You by Candy Steiner. If I could pick one Candy Steiner book that is my favorite that I would recommend to anybody, no matter what tropes or anything that you like, it would be this book. This is my favorite book that she's written. It's very emotional and it's one that makes you stop and rethink your life and what you're doing with it and if what you're doing is making you happy. And in this book, we are following Cooper and Emery and Cooper is working at a diner and in walks Emery. And Emery is very broody and mysterious, but very kind. And it's very clear that he's adventurous too. The first thing that he says to Cooper is, what makes you happy? And that question to her really puts life into perspective. She's not happy where she's at and she wants more from her life and what she's doing. And she's finally at a place where she can take chances. She just hasn't yet. Emery invites Cooper to go on a road trip with him. He doesn't tell her where he's going. He doesn't tell her why he's going somewhere. He's just like, if you want to come, I'll take you to where you want to go and we can just ride together. She ends up getting in the car with Emery and they go on this road trip together. Complete strangers, enforced proximity. Cooper is going through a lot. She also has a prosthetic leg. So there's a great disability representation in it and the struggle that comes with that. Um, Emery is struggling mentally. So the representation of depression and anxiety and suicidal thoughts is in this. It, when I say emotional, it's very emotional. These two find comfort and safety in each other where they didn't think they could find it. And the road trip becomes a lot more to them and a lot more than just personal growth, but also growth within each other and finding someone who understands you and who you can be 100% authentically yourself with. There are so many triggers, so please check that before you go into it. But if you love the emotional and angsty romances with some forced proximity and steaminess, this is definitely a great book for you. With this being slow burn romance, 
you have to remember going into it that these things take time and there's a lot that all of these couples in these books go through that it takes a while for their relationship to develop and that's what makes it so beautiful in the end. The next book I'm going to recommend is Luna and the Lie by Mariana Zapata. This book is so good. So good. Mariana Zapata writes everything slow burn, but I feel like I have to recommend this one because it's my favorite by her. Um, Luna is not your typical girl. She works in an auto detailing shop for a car business and she paints cars for a living. And then you have Rip and Rip is actually the manager of the car detailing shop. So Rip is very broody. He's kind of like seems like he's angry with life but just very quiet and shut off and luna is going through a lot she has a lot of family issues she's dealing with home issues but she has this joy in life to her that is very hard to come by especially in somebody who's struggling so deeply and she is very intentional about the way she treats people so rip is not very approachable he's not someone you look at and you're like hey i'm gonna go have a friendly conversation with him He's just not that guy. And Luna just doesn't care. For some reason, she remembers his birthday. She decides to do little things for him, like baking him cakes and surprising him in that way. And he acts like he doesn't like it or that he doesn't notice it, but he does. And they find themselves really needing each other in a way that's very unexplainable. Um, Rip shows up for Luna in ways that nobody else does. Luna understands Rip in a beautiful and like raw type of way that he hasn't received from anybody before. And they find this beautiful like sanctification between each other that is very slow, it takes a long time to develop. But it was one of those where I was actually really satisfied with the slowness of it. I, I loved it. I was okay with there not being a lot of steam because the angst was so good and the character development in both of them was so well written and I really felt like I knew them and like I was experiencing their romance with them. It was so worth it. Such a beautiful story but a really fun twist on a slow burn especially seeing a heroine who does something so manly but does it well and does it with like poise and classiness. I don't know. So good. I love it. One of my favorites by Mariana Zapata. So I'm also going to recommend The Gravity of Us by Brittany Cherry. This book we are following Lucy and Graham and Lucy is your quirky girl who wears flowers in her hair and crazy outfits but is inwardly and outwardly beautiful and Graham is a best-selling novelist who is grumpy and angry and feels nothing whereas Lucy feels everything. Graham has a habit of thinking that people always leave because he's felt like that's how his entire life has been. He doesn't want to get close to anybody because chances are they're going to leave and forget about him and leave him behind. So he's got a lot of hurt in his own way and he's trying to write a book but not feeling inspired. He is actually married and come to find out his wife is pregnant, has her baby and takes off and leaves him. So once again, he's left again. And Lucy is connected to that baby in a way that I'm not going to say because that would be a spoiler. And she ends up helping Graham take care of his baby. And this is where their romance starts. You see his heart start to soften for Lucy and he starts to trust her and build this beautiful emotional relationship with her and really starting to, I don't know, have faith that not everybody is bad and not everybody is going to leave him. And the quotes in this book are, are so beautiful. Like this man is a novelist. Okay. But the way that he sees Lucy was so like in depth and like otherworldly, otherworldly in a way that a man can view a woman. It's not very easy to describe this book because it's very emotionally driven. Their romance is my favorite because two people who have been through so much in their life find happiness within each other. It was just so great. All right, the next book I'm going to recommend is Meant to Be by Liza James. This book is so freaking angsty. Like I'm telling you, I was practically having a heart attack reading it. I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. So if you like a book that has angst and you're not gonna be able to put down until you finish it, this is the book for you. It's kind of love triangle-y, kind of not. We have a three person friend group and we have Bloom, their other friend, I can't remember her name, and then Carter, who is our hero. They have all been best friends throughout childhood. It's always been the three of them until something starts to change with the other girl and Carter. Bloom starts to notice that something is going on between them that they're not saying, and they're getting a little close. 
Well, Bloom is like, I'm not going to be hung up on Carter. I know I have this attraction towards him. He's my best friend. I just never wanted to like shake things up in our friend group. I don't, I don't want to ruin our friendship. So she ends up dating his best friend. And Bloom is the girl who paints pottery. She like shapes pottery. She doesn't care what she looks like. She is inwardly and outwardly beautiful, but she's not what you would consider the popular girl. She's kind of the loner at the parties. And whereas Carter is the quarterback of the college football team, he's the womanizer. Everybody knows him. Everybody wants to be around him. So complete opposite of Bloom. But somehow they work in friendship wise and they really understand each other and thrive off of their friendship. Um, Bloom starts dating his best friend and Carter ain't having it. All of a sudden after they share this one little instance, like this one night together, not not like a sleeping together night, but like a moment together. And he is all of a sudden feeling things for her that he never thought existed before. And he does not want her dating anybody not even his best friend. He's going to self-sabotage. He's going to do whatever he can to make sure that doesn't happen and that she remembers her moments with Carter before her moments with his friend. It's like a little competition. The last book I'm going to recommend is A Photo Finished by Elsie Silver. This is the second book in her Gold Rush Ranch series. And if you know me, you know that I don't really read small town romance. I don't like it. But Elsie Silver, I have loved and ate up every single book that she's written. And this is my favorite by her so far. Um, we are following Cole and Violet and Violet is trying to expand her horizons a little bit, trying to be a little bit of a bad girl. And she gets on a dating site, like hookup type of site where she sends pictures or videos of herself and she gets paid for it. Cole is our hero and he is very lonely. He is a military vet and he has a lot of struggles of his own. So this does have a disability representation to it too. Um, Cole is just emotionally unstable, but is craving feminine attention, but doesn't want to do it face to face. So he gets on this website and he meets Violet and he sees her face, but she, but he will not let her see his face. So she has no idea who he is. She just knows that she sees the body that he's got and she likes it. She likes what she sees. So they have this little romance together online and then Violet ends things abruptly. And then all of a sudden they don't see or speak to each other again. Well, Violet actually races horses for a living. She's a, I think you call it a jockey on a ranch and Cole's brother and him happen to own and run that ranch. So Cole leaves from the military, comes home, and it comes face to face with Violet. And he knows her immediately, but she does not know him. And he actually ends up revealing himself to her. So they don't get off on the right feet because he's angry how she ended things. She's angry because he called her out like that. And now she's embarrassed. And they end up having to stay in this house in forced proximity with each other. Violet actually gets injured. So there's caretaking. It is just so freaking sweet so sweet. It feels like enemies to lovers. They're very at odds. They don't get along, but they know that there's feelings under the surface because they've had that for each other before. It's just finding it and running with it. And Cole's not ready for that, but Violet is. And their dynamic is so cute because he's so grumpy and she is so sunshiny like sees the best in everybody is willing to help anybody. Um, is not afraid to speak up and ask questions and admit when she wants something and yeah it's steamy too so good all right guys that's all i have for my slow burn romances really hope that if you love slow burn romances you pick up one of these recommendations and try it for yourself um i am just so thankful for you guys and for your support and always watching my videos and commenting and liking and subscribing and all those things it means more to me than i could ever say or expect from you guys so thank you um i will see you in my next one i guess